Welcome to the Laurie Calvert Model Railway Show. In my front room, I've got three layouts, the moving mine, and then Piddlewick Yard and Explode. And I've also got Steampunk Spaceport upstairs in another room. So I'll show you these layouts all running today. This model is Steampunk Spaceport. It's 41 inches wide and it's a shuttle layout with an analog control SS2A controller and it's designed just for a single locomotive to run. However you switch these points the loco will run automatically from one position to another because there's diodes in place and they act as electronic buffers, they stop the locomotive when necessary at each part of the track. There's also a space rocket model kit, some other castle model kits that I've all steampunked up and I've added Games Workshop types of models onto them and detailed them up further. And there's also some Games Workshop kits and they all make really good items to add on to this layout. So it's a fun layout, a demonstrator. I can add one of these train tech analog sound systems and if I put that in that detects movement And then get a wagon, put this in the wagon, so put the lid on, and I've got a simple sound system that responds to the movement of the loco. Now of course, normally you would drive to the sound of the train tech chip. This one is just shuttling automatically. So it tends to make random noises. It stops and starts when it thinks it should. It's a little late in there. This a move, it won't start immediately. Then it picks up the movement, it starts. Normally you would drive the train for a while. Nevertheless, I'm going to run it just with Executor. Here are some airfix astronauts, they make great divers, some sunbathers, hovercraft model, and of course the steampunked castle. I've added some details to that. Some overtly steampunk details such as gears, just to show immediately that it is steampunk, but then some more detailing on the sides.
These vehicles are wonderful model kits from the Games Workshop brand. Here is Apollo 27, as the model kit is called. And there's some more Warhammer style machinery. There is Executor, the first steampunk locomotive I made. I like Executor. So the points can get switched manually. And normally this layout will have just one lane selected. I'm going to run down that lane for most of the day. I plan to give this model, donate it to Rocks and Miniature Worlds, and they can have it set, shut them on whatever lane they wish. And this is a demonstrator layout. I quite like that line, that track, as it's at the front. So now done moving mine, this is my American abandoned gold mine. First thought, there's a couple of switches I need to switch on and they power things up such as the lights. I've also got, if I wish, switch in here puts lights on. Switch over here, puts lights on. Particularly good at night. And if you hear a meow every now and again, it is of course neon. <laughs> Pixel's in here too. Pixel is just over here. See? Pixel is chilling next to Piddlewick Yard and explode. The moving mine has one automatic shuttle. It's called an SS2A. Now it's for you sell it. It's made by Block Signaling and probably other people sell it too. So this SW9 locomotive, this GP50, they shuttle back and forth. GP50 moves less of a distance and it keeps moving towards this end when it's facing this direction so it goes faster in that direction than this one and um, that means that when you have a shuttle with diodes the locomotive normally ends up at one end because that's the end as it moves backwards and forwards it gradually gravitates to so here the GP50 will decelerate nicely when it gets to the other end it's more of a sudden stop because it's hitting the electronic buffer. That's okay though. This allows me to put a cow on the track and this cow is actually in just the perfect position relative to the diode which I call the electronic buffer. It's just here. So it actually stops <coughs> centimetre away from the cow. You could have it even nearer if you wanted, it will always stop there. I've got lights in things, and of course, whereas it's a normal diode in there, I've got a flickering diode in here. 
another flicker LED. Some cars are Corvette, Mustang and Thunderbird. Thunderbird is a reference to American Graffiti, one of my favourite films, that pink Thunderbird was in that. And I used to own a Corvette, not the Mark II or the C2, but the C3. I have a Corvette and I love Ford, so we've got a Mustang and a Thunderbird. This layout is all about atmosphere, as most of my layouts are, and this one is grimy, run down, things broken. So this will happily shunt back and forth all day. So I can demonstrate this layout to people and chat about it and not worry about its operation. It's more about the modelling than the operation, this model, of course. And people do different things, you know, if the operation is important to you then that is where you should concentrate your efforts. Now, I do have three buttons on this layout and they do different things, so let me demonstrate for you. The yellow one highlights the gold in the hills, there's a piece of gold and there are other bits of gold that are smaller around here. And this button highlights the gold for people. There's a blue and a black button. The blue button puts on a couple of bonfires. There they are. More flicker LEDs. And of course, you may have noticed there is one bonfire that isn't on fire. That's the black button, this little guy peeing. Quite an expensive model, but humorous, that adds a bit of a laugh at a show. Oh, forgot that one. <laughs> there you go. Done moving mine. Piddlewick Yard is a scrapyard. It doesn't really exist, but I imagine it's a modern day preservation line owned by a scrap merchant, Mr. Smith. And he restores old vehicles as well as old locomotives so therefore you get some nice preserved old vehicles here such as the Capri and the Morris Minor. I used to own a Capri and our family used to own a Morris Minor. It's also got some military vehicles here. I have three buttons again. The yellow one is for the Sherman tank there's a blue one that is a light in a building and this black one does something quite funny as well. I like to have entertainment on my layouts. So the black button operates a just married van and uh, hopefully you'll get what I'm trying to say is happening there. Car is bouncing up and down quite happily. In case you're wondering how that is produced I've simply got a little motor in there with an offset wheel on it and when you put a vehicle on that it bounces up and down could be any vehicle really let's try the Capri and it does try to push it in this direction so I've got some pieces here to hold it there you go that's the Capri <laughs> it's noisy, a noisy effect, can't help that, that's how the motor is, but it's worth it for the entertainment. Meanwhile the trains are shuttling nicely, there's a Jinty and a packet that run up and down, one runs to the right, one to the left, and also you'll notice I've got a bonfire on here, lots of rusty locos. All gives it atmosphere, I think. In the engine shed, I do have an effect I can turn on. It is operated independently. I like having my eggs split into different baskets, so Therefore, I'll find a switch. It's here somewhere, oh, here it is. 
There you go, and this operates electronic welding simulation, a fairly well worn concept. Lots of people have welding flickering lights in their models, but what's wrong with that? I think it looks great and does give a good effect, so perhaps someone is doing something on that. Other details you can spot include a cannon, military cannon. Show you some of the other modeling details, some old spare wheels. There's these people chatting away, a skip and an old telephone box. Pauline covered and this is the scrapyard sort of area. I love building these sort of models. Add plenty of detail, I've added some cotton in there and some clear plastic just as a glass window. And some cotton around that to look as if it's rope. And the sheeting, the metal sheeting is made from plastic that is actually part of an old coke bottle. She needs re-gluing, she's fallen over. Take her off for the moment. And I've got a mirror here, so if I hold it still, it's quite a nice effect. There's a dried up pond here. So that concludes a quick look around Piddlewick Yard. Let's take you to 1917-1918 and explode a World War I model. This one has a switch here and that puts on a couple of flickering campfires. So this layout features no less than five Mark I tanks. This one is fitted with the steering gear at the rear. There's some soldiers there, British soldiers over in France in World War I. There's a little French fishing boat here and a guy's fishing. Now that fishing rod is made with a cat's whisker, one that fell off, I didn't pull it off, and also there's some glue that's still holding. You can hardly see this with the normal eyes, thankfully the camera's picked it up, but the fishing line is made from glue, Yoohoo glue. This fishing boat, the guy's taking the girl somewhere, he's dropped his oar in the water. There's another, the fourth Mark I tank. Some more steering gear from the tanks, some packages and a fifth Mark I tank. And these two locomotives are converted Smokey Joes. I've done simple conversions of them to make them Baldwin 040s. I've just added some extra domes on the roof, altered the cab a little and closed it. I haven't done too much, these are fairly straightforward conversions. There's also a pug here model kit that I've modified as if it's got exploded. So you can add some lovely details on the loco and of course the diode stops locomotive. There's the diode, it stops the locomotive from actually hitting the pug model. There are even horses on this layout. These are airfix troops. They're quite difficult to make. They're made from a sort of rubbery plastic and makes them quite difficult. I used a photographic 
vaccine. Well, that's one that I printed out. I used Photoshop to replicate it a few times slightly differently. I printed it out and stuck it on. So there are joins. And they're very hard to see those joins. And of course these buildings. Now each building has a little coloured dot on it. And the footprint so I know where it goes. And these are FX ruins. Some of them I've smashed up even more. In the river there's part of a steering mechanism for a tank. Bit of a piece of a bicycle, some junk. And the window frames I've smashed up further. Sometimes I put in panes of glass, sometimes I don't. And over here, I thought it was someone falling over, it's not. <laughs> There is also in here a little flickering light and a figure. So under certain lighting conditions, you can see that. Very subtle. Oh, there's some wallpaper in the house. I thought that was kind of nice. So this is Explode Layout. Someone asked me to build it for them as I'd built Aftermath, which was a World War I layout that I've donated to Stomari's museum. So I built the second one. The Explode has more tanks, but less of other things. So they are slightly different. It's nice to vary the layout slightly and do different things on them. Really pleased with each of them though. Also got a sound effects unit and I can run that next to the layout if I wish. Turn the volume up and down and that gives it some atmosphere. I normally put that behind the layout. It's a race. <laughs> so that oh, concludes our simple tour around my front room and also a room upstairs that has steampunk spaceport in it. If you want to see any of these videos of these layouts being made, just go onto my YouTube channel, Calvert Film, and then search the name of the layout, Peterwick Yard, the Moving Mine, or Explode. And these three layouts are going to a guy called Ian. And Ian also has Terra Street. That's a Victorian layout. So if you want to see how that was built, just search Calvert Film Terra Street. So here I have four of my layouts in the end. <laughs> almost as many layouts as I have Neon so it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Neon and uh, happy railway modelling <laughs>